Did you know that the first people to inhabit Europe looked nothing like modern Europeans? In 2006, in a cave called La Braña in northern Spain, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a man who lived around 7,000 years ago. His DNA shocked the scientific community. His skin was almost black, his hair was dark, but his eyes were light blue. That genetic combination no longer exists in people today. Geneticists concluded that this hunter had no connection to later farming communities or the peoples of the Bronze Age. He belonged to an ancient European lineage, one of the last survivors of the Ice Age. So how did Europe go from dark-skinned, blue-eyed hunters to the olive-skinned, brown-eyed populations of southern Europe we see today? The answer lies in the DNA of the Iberian Peninsula, one of the oldest crossroads in human history. It was a gateway for waves of migration, where genes from Africa, the Near East, and the eastern steppes of Europe all blended over time. Thanks to paleogenetics, we can now trace that path step by step, from the first Homo sapiens in the caves along the Atlantic coast to modern Spaniards and Portuguese, whose cells still carry the memory of glaciers, natural disasters, and massive human migrations. Roughly 300,000 years ago, in what is now Northwest Africa, at a site called Jebel Irhud, scientists discovered the bones of early Homo sapiens. Their skulls already showed the modern structure of the forehead and brain. These humans lived in an environment that closely resembled what would later become Andalusia. Between Africa and Europe was only the Strait of Gibraltar, a narrow channel that during periods of lower sea levels could have been crossed. According to anthropologists, this is where the earliest attempts to populate the Iberian Peninsula began. But long before that, the land was home to others, Neanderthals. Their remains were found in the Cima de los Huesos site, deep in the Atapuerca Mountains of northern Spain. These bones, over 400,000 years old, are some of the oldest human remains ever discovered in Europe. They belonged to a population that would eventually evolve into the classic Neanderthals. DNA extracted from these remains shows that there was ongoing gene exchange between Africa and Europe long before modern humans arrived. About 45,000 years ago, the first Homo sapiens finally reached Iberia. They brought with them stone tools from the Oranian culture, which archaeologists later found in the caves of El Castillo and La Pasiega. These early modern humans lived alongside Neanderthals and interbred with them. Evidence of this mixing is still present in the genes of modern Spaniards and Portuguese, about 2% of their DNA. By the end of the Ice Age, Iberia had become a safe haven for the surviving human populations of Europe. Beneath layers of basalt and limestone, not only tools but also resilient genetic lineages were preserved. Lineages that endured through eras of extreme cold and isolation. Two of these ancient mitochondrial haplogroups, U5 and H, would become the backbone of Western Europe's future gene pool. From these warm valleys and coastal shelters, the next chapter in human history would begin. Around 20,000 years ago, Earth entered the peak of the last glacial maximum. Northern Europe was buried beneath an ice sheet nearly two miles thick, but the Iberian Peninsula remained free of ice. Between the Atlantic Ocean and the Pyrenees, forests, rivers, and herds of bison still thrived, a rare refuge for human life. At this time, Iberia became one of Europe's most important refugia, a place where humanity survived the brutal glacial cold. During the Magdalenian period, hunters lived in the caves of Cantabria and Asturias. Their campsites, Altamira, El Castillo, Lasco, and Tito Bustillo have preserved wall paintings of horses, bison, and deer, all created with mineral pigments. These artworks, made over 17,000 years ago, were the work of people genetically connected to Paleolithic populations across Western Europe. DNA extracted from their bones carries ancient mitochondrial lineages, U, and 5, and H, direct descendants of those who lived in the region even before the peak of the Ice Age. Life was harsh but stable. Isolated by mountain ranges and frigid plains, the Magdalenian people developed a unique genetic signature. They likely had darker complexions, dark hair, and light-colored eyes. 
This trait would reappear thousands of years later in a remarkable discovery at La Braña Cave in northern Spain. There, buried in layers of peat, archaeologists unearthed two men who lived about 7,000 years ago. Their genome told a surprising story. Dark skin, blue eyes, and a total absence of genes related to milk digestion and skin lightening. These were descendants of Magdalenian hunters, the last Europeans whose appearance still reflected an Ice Age legacy. As the ice began to retreat, these populations moved north and east. From Iberia, they followed the coastlines of France and Belgium, spreading their genes throughout Atlantic Europe. Their descendants would form the backbone of the Western European gene pool after the Ice Age. Their DNA carries the memory of survival, of thousands of years of cold, and of a world where the brightness in their eyes mirrored the frozen skies above their caves. About 7,500 years ago, a new kind of people arrived in Western Europe. They didn't hunt herds, they grew grain, raised sheep, and built permanent homes. Their journey began in Anatolia, in what is now modern-day Turkey. From there, agriculture spread westward through the Balkans. One of those routes led straight to the shores of the Iberian Peninsula. That's when the first farmers arrived, bringing with them not only a new way of life, but also entirely new genetic lineages. Archaeological evidence of this transformation has been found at sites like Perdigoiz, Los Millares, and El Toro Cave. These settlements featured patterned pottery, grinding stones for grain, and bones of domesticated animals. The DNA of people buried there stood in sharp contrast to that of the local hunter-gatherers. These farmers belonged to the G2AY chromosome lineage from the Near East and carried mitochondrial haplogroups N, 1, A, and K. They were direct descendants of Anatolian agriculturalists. Along with them came new mutations. Genes like SLC24A5 and SLC45A2, first found in Neolithic farmers, were linked to lighter skin tone. These changes made sunlight more useful in northern latitudes, helping the body produce more vitamin D. At the same time, new dietary traits emerged, including the ability to process milk and gluten. These biological innovations quickly spread across Iberia, reshaping not just how people looked, but how they lived. Still, the genetic landscape was far from uniform. In some areas, like El Toro Cave in southern Spain, archaeologists discovered mixed populations, descendants of native hunter-gatherers and incoming farmers. Their DNA reveals a slow merging of two worlds. This blending laid the foundation for the modern peoples of southern Europe, individuals with lighter skin tones, dark eyes, and a rich, layered ancestry. The Neolithic didn't just reshape DNA. It changed the rhythm of life itself. Europe ceased to be a continent of nomads. From this point forward, the story of cultures, cities, and civilizations began, and with them, a new chapter in human evolution. Around 2500 BC, a new wave of migration swept into Europe. From the east, across the Black Sea steppes, came the descendants of the Yamnaya culture, nomadic people who mastered the horse, the wheel, and bronze. Their movement reached as far as the Atlantic, and it was during this expansion that the Bell Beaker culture emerged in Iberia, one of the most mysterious phenomena in European archaeology. The name comes from their distinctive pottery, vessels shaped like inverted bells, found in burial sites stretching from Portugal to Poland. But behind the pottery was more than craftsmanship. DNA extracted from Iberian burials of this period revealed a dramatic shift in paternal lineages. Almost all earlier Y chromosomes were replaced by 1 R1B-M269, brought in from the East. This wasn't a slow process of intermixing, but a massive demographic wave. Research at sites like La Huelga and Minas de Rios confirmed the scale of the change, about 90% of local males disappeared from the genetic record, replaced by newcomers. Meanwhile, many maternal lines remained, passed down from Neolithic farming women. These steppe descendants brought more than metallurgy and livestock. They also introduced new physical traits. Their genome carried variants associated with lighter hair and eye color. 
they brought with them an Indo-European language, which over time likely influenced the dialects of Western Europe. While no trace of their original speech survives, the genetic and archaeological records align. The Bronze Age marked the beginning of a new population type, one that would go on to form the genetic foundation of Europe. The Bell Beaker culture vanished as suddenly as it appeared, but its legacy lives on in nearly every person in Western Europe. Modern Spaniards, French, and British men have almost entirely inherited the paternal line of these migrants. That's why today's genetic map of Europe reveals a single trace, a footprint of the Bronze Age wave that brought an end to the continent's prehistoric era and permanently reshaped its peoples. After the Bronze Age, the Iberian Peninsula became a true crossroads of civilizations. Its southern shores faced directly toward Africa a fact that shaped the region's destiny. By the 9th century BC, Phoenician colonies appeared along the Andalusian coast. Gadir, now Cadiz, and Malacca, modern Malaga. These Levantine traders brought the alphabet, commerce, and Middle Eastern genes. Their DNA carried haplogroups J and T, common in the Eastern Mediterranean. Later, these settlements came under the control of Carthage. Along with them came North African elements. Haplogroups EM81 and U6 widely found across the Maghreb. This marked the first major wave of African ancestry into Europe. After the Punic Wars, Rome absorbed the peninsula into its empire, but the southern legacy endured. Even Roman inscriptions in Andalusia often included names of Semitic origin, evidence of centuries of cultural fusion. In the early 8th century, another wave arrived, Berbers and Arabs. The Islamic expansion from North Africa transformed Iberia more profoundly than any previous conquest. For seven centuries, Al-Andalus remained a center of science and craftsmanship, and with culture came genes. Modern genetic studies show that about 10% of the DNA in southern Spain and Portugal traces back to North Africa. Even on the Canary Islands, settled by the Guanches, descendants of North African Berbers, researchers have found the same genetic signature. Mummies, studied in the 21st century, revealed a striking resemblance to the people of Andalusia. In this way, Africa, the Middle East, and Europe all converge at a single point, on land where the edges of continents almost touch. For the first time, modern genetics has made it possible to explore Iberian history at the level of cells. Between 2019 and 2022, Major studies published in Nature and Science analyzed hundreds of ancient and modern DNA samples. The results revealed a complex mosaic of origins. About 40% of the DNA of today's Spanish and Portuguese populations comes from Bronze Age steppe migrants, roughly 30% from Neolithic farmers, and around 20% from Paleolithic hunter-gatherers who survived the peak of the Ice Age. The rest includes Middle Eastern and North African ancestry introduced over the past 3,000 years. This blend has made Iberia a uniquely layered corner of Europe, a place where North meets South and Africa meets the Atlantic. Genetic maps show that in Northern Spain, ancient lineages like R1B and H dominate, while in the South, especially in Andalusia, there are clear traces of North African haplogroups such as EM, 81 and U6. The dark eyes and olive skin, now seen as iconic traits of southern Europe, are the result of thousands of years of evolution, adaptation, and migration. Every Spaniard and Portuguese today carries within them a trace of every era, from the Neanderthals of Atapuerca to the Phoenician traders and the Arab builders of Al Andalus. Their genome is a living chronicle of a continent that has endured glaciers, wars, and migrations. Iberia remains a living archive of ancient DNA, a place where the past hasn't vanished, but continues to exist in every generation, in every cell, in every brown-eyed glance that reflects the full story of Southern Europe.